Hello dear students very good afternoon to all of you today i am going to discuss about the s2 antagonist which is called as anti secretory agents why it is called as anti secretory agents because it inhibit the secretion of gastric juice okay so that's why it was called as anti secretory agents today we will discuss about the introduction of s2 blockers mode of action of anti secretory agents SAR of S2 blockers, drug belongs to the S2 blockers and use and side effects of the S2 blockers. Now introduction of S2 blockers. The secretion of gastric acid occurs at the level of parietal cells of the oxyntic gland in the gastric mucosa producing 2 to 3 liter of gastric juice daily. And the pH of hydrochloric acid is approximate 1. Ultimately, this secretory process occur via an H plus K plus ATPase pump that exchange hydronium ion with uptake of potassium ion. Several mediators regulate this secretion by way of receptor system on the basolateral membrane. The H2 histaminergic pathway is cyclic AMP dependent. Gastrin and muscarinic receptors also regulate the secretion of gastric acid through calcium ion dependent pathway. Now mode of action of S2 blocker. The S2 antagonists are competitive antagonists of histamine at parietal cell S2 receptor. They suppress the normal secretion of acid by parietal cells and the mild stimulated secretion of acid. They accomplish this by Two mechanisms. Histamine released by enterochromaffin like cells in the stomach is blocked from binding on parietal cell S2 receptor, which stimulate acid secretion. Therefore, other substances that promote acid secretion, such as gastrin and acetylcholine, have reduced effect on parietal cell when the S2 receptor are blocked. So, this is the mode of action of S2 blockers. Generally, uh, S plus K plus ATPase pump involved in the synthesis of gastric juice. Okay, so this is the phenomena uh, in which in the parietal cells there is an exchange of potassium with the proton. Okay, and proton come outside the parietal cells to the gastric lining. Okay, and they synthesize the gastric juice. Now this done by the three type of receptors gastrin acetylcholine and prostaglandin a2 so when gastrin release it activate the h plus k plus atps pump and at a time there is an exchange of potassium and the proton hydronium ion take place okay so this why they involve in the synthesis of gastric juice same way acetylcholine also act and bind with the muscarinic three receptors and start the exchange of proton with the potassium K plus ion. So, it synthesize the gastric juice. Now, histamine. Histamine activate the cyclic AMP and cyclic AMP level increase the protein kinase A. This protein kinase A activate this H plus K plus ATPase pump and it involve in the exchange of H plus and K plus. Why? Histamine blockers block this process. So, there is a decrease the level of cyclic AMP and cyclic AMP level decrease protein kinase A protein and it cause the inhibition of H plus K plus ATPase pump and ultimately it produce the anti secretory action. Now SAR of S2 antagonist. The first approach in synthesizing S2 antagonist was the use of histamine as the lead compound to produce antagonist activity. It can be done by adding extra hydrophobic group to the structure like this number two varying the polar amino group means there is a at amino group there is a number of polar group at edge and number three make extension to the ethyl linker between the amino and the imidazole ring means this linkage are uh, exchange this is the ethyl linkage so it is extension like it is a propyl it is a butyl okay 
so there is an extension to the ethyl linker between the amino and the imidazole ring now the next approach was to vary the polar groups in histamine with other polar functional group the first derivative was developed is n guanyl histamine so this is structure of n guanyl histamine okay so at the polar amino group there is a attachment of guanidine group and it is highly basic and it is highly polar okay the guanidine analog of histamine was then found to possess weak antagonist activity to the acid secretory action of histamine so from the n guanidine histamine it is a lead molecules and from this there is a development of three types of molecules number 1 the amino group is isostatically replaced with the thio group and it is converted into partial agonist and poor antagonist in the next structure there is a ethyl linkage this is a ethyl linkage it is converted into propyl linkage and it is a extension of ethyl chain so it it gives the antagonist activity while in third development there is a urea is replaced with the thio urea structures so it is a partial agonist poor antagonist this means that both terminal amine are essential for the activity means this both terminal amine are essential for the activity okay and guanyl histamine has there is a propyl chain so has a neutral thio urea group and it produces weak antagonist with no agonist activity why when the chain is extended up to the butyl system and it form biryamide biryamide it 100 times more potent than n guanyl histamine and it is specific h2 antagonist so the imidazole ring proved to be important for both agonist and antagonist binding so the pk of this ring should be closer to the histamine one it is 5.74 the pk of imidazole from biryamide is 7.25 which means that around 40% of the imidazole ring is ionized the side chain of biryamide should be electron withdrawing to make the pk of the ring close to 5.74 guanyl histamine provide the lead molecules and from it there is a number of series of anti secretory agents was developed now extension of the side chain increase anti h2 potency but some agonist activity remain so if you seen here there is a increase the side chain okay ethyl converted into propyl okay so it increase the anti secretory action but it's also retain the some agonist activity okay so replacing the basic guanido group with the neutral thiourea produce effective h2 antagonist means it is this is the basic guanidine group is replaced with thio urea to produce effective h2 antagonist biryamide lack agonist action but was not orally absorbed in metiamide reduce the pk of the ring nitrogen and reduce ionization it also increase the membrane permeability and absorption and 10x more potent than biryamide it also caused the kidney damage and granulocytopenia possibly due to the thiourea so was replaced by the isosteric guanidine this compound being highly basic was 20 times less potent but replacement of this group with strong electron withdrawal but more lipophilic sino amino derivatives produce cimetidine so the drug interaction potential and several adverse effect of cimetidine appears to be directly related to the presence of imidazole group so cimetidine basically produced side effect of gynecomastia due to the presence of imidazole ring and thioether derivatives so this limitation prompt additional drug design and development efforts which reveal that the imidazole ring was not required for h2 antagonistic activity in fact replacement of the imidazole ring with a furan or a thiazol result in a famotidine and nizatidine molecules heterocycles with a basic ring substitute guanidine a dimethyl amino methyl not only enhance 
both potency and selectivity of H2 antagonism but also reduce cytochrome and renal secretory drug interaction. Now drugs belongs to the H2 blocker okay. So I have described here according to their common structure. So in the birimamide, metiamide and cimetidine there is a difference in a X okay. In birimamide there is a butyl chain while in metiamide and cimetidine have a isosteric sulfur while in cimetidine there is a cyano amino molecules. The another group uh, renitidine and the nizatidine and the famotidine which have a there is a replacement of imidazole ring with the furan and thiazole nucleus ok. So in this cases the aromatic group and a key imidazole ring replaced with the furan in the case of ranitidine while in the case of nizatidine it is replaced with the thiazole and in the same things in famotidine case it is also replaced with the thiazole ring system. Now use and side effects of H2 blocker to reduce acid reflux which may cause heartburn or inflammation of the esophagitis. These conditions are sometimes called gastroesophageal reflux disease. To treat ulcer in the stomach and in part of the gut help heal ulcers associated with anti-inflammatory medication called NSAIDs. In other conditions where it is helpful to reduce acid in the stomach. Also it is used in various conditions like damage to the stomach and uh, intestine due to the stress or trauma, high disease or pancreatic problem. Stomach or intestinal ulcer resulting from damage caused by medication and used to treat rheumatoid arthritis. Now side effects. Some of the side effects that may occur with esteroreceptor blockers include constipation, diarrhea, difficulty sleeping, dry mouth, dry skin, headache, ringing in the ears, a runny nose and trouble in urinating. Okay. So this is all about the H2 blockers and its mode of action and side effect. Okay. Thank you.